precious heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this morning, Father, just praising your name, giving you all the glory for all the great things that you've done. I'm grateful to you, Father, for each and every one of us that's able to be here this morning. I pray, Lord, to please be with those who are not, so they may be here another day. We just pray, Lord, Father, beg your forgiveness, Father, for our sin. We pray for your mercy, Father. We confess our sins to you. We repent for our sins. We do, do just pray for your mercy. Father, just pray, Lord, to please be with all of those on our prayer list, Father, Lord. Those who need the individual needs that are desired, Father, just pray. Pray, Lord, that you please lay your healing hand upon those who need it. Please show the Lord those that need your comfort. We just pray, Lord, to please be with Brother Joey as he brings us your message this morning. These things we ask for you this night. Amen. <laughs>
Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us to enjoy. God, we just thank you for allowing us to have a party. We just thank you for this opportunity to have a nap and study your word. Love you. 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 And I do pray now that it comes time for us to give back a portion of that which you blessed us with. I do pray that you be a blessing to see a thing you get. I will say, ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
thank God to put this song in the right place. 424. 424. Verse after the Amen. Yeah. 
turn in your Bibles with me to the book of Psalms. And we're going to be looking at Psalm 83 this morning. Psalm 84. Psalm 84, beginning with verse 1. How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. <coughs> even your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They will still be praising you, Selah. And over to verse 10. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. I'd be remiss if I didn't read the next two verses because these are two of my favorite. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in you. Amen. Brother Benny Smith, would you pray for me before I bring the message this morning? Lord God, we just thank for blessed life, God, and just uh, ask you please forgive us our sins, God. Open our hearts for this message that we're about to receive, God. We just ask you to uh, take that blessing, work miracles in each and every person here. God, we just uh, thank you for the growing body here. We thank you for, for, for being a part of this church and just uh, blessing our soul, God. God, uh, just lead us through this service. May we get every every ounce of what you bring to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Benny. This psalm is, is known as the psalm of the tabernacle. And from what I've read, it's believed that it's written by David. Now, contrary to popular belief, <coughs> the entire book of Psalms was not written by David. Uh, there were others that, that wrote some of the chapters. But we're believe, we believe that this one was written by David when he was in exile from Jerusalem uh, during the rebellion <coughs> of his son Absalom. And if that's the case, it shows us a great deal about the heart of David. You see, David was a man that loved the house of the Lord. And to David, there was no other place in the world like the house of the Lord. It was a place that he longed to be. Now, we all know that the true house of the Lord is up in heaven. But his true tabernacle now for each one of us while we're here on this earth, is in our hearts as believers. The visible and tangible symbol of both these things is the church. When the believers of God come together to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, there's nothing on this earth that's closer to heaven than that. What we experience here this morning it's just a little glimpse, a little piece of heaven. We're dedicated to the worship and the glory of God. Our church is a sacred spot. And we are on holy ground indeed. Now the things that made the tabernacle so special to David ought to be the same things that make the church special to each one of us this morning. And let's look at some reminders of why this place is so special to us. First of all, when we walk through those doors, we're inspired by joy and love. We feel it when we walk in those doors. Mm -hmm. And David described the church as worthy to be loved. Believers ought to love the church. And there's two good, good ways that we can show our love for the church. And both of them start with a P, and we can remember them easily. The first one is present. 
and the other is pleasant. Hebrews 10.25 says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. And then Psalm 122.1, I was glad when they said to me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. I have a lot of reasons that I love the church, and I know that you do too. As I was growing up, I came to Union quite often as a boy, uh, mostly to gospel scenes that we had on Saturday night here, back in those days. But when I was called on to be your pastor, I felt like I was coming home. And I still feel that way every time I walk through those doors. And there's no better feeling than knowing that you're in God's will. And I feel that I'm in God's will as your pastor. And I feel all the wonderful things here at Union that I believe you're supposed to feel when you come to church as well. Like hope and help and fellowship and love and friendship and comfort and understanding and encouragement <coughs> and strength and peace and freedom to worship Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior as we choose. We find all these things that we need for our journey in this life here in the house of the Lord. And I'm so thankful for our church and I love the church this morning and I know you do as well. Now David tells us that he longed to be in the house of the Lord with all his mind, heart, body, and soul. And he desperately needed and wanted to be in his place of worship. You see, David remembered a lot of things that we have forgotten. He remembered that the house of the Lord was a refuge. It was a place of safety from all the storms in life. When he thought about the house of the Lord, his heart started beating a little faster. And if you mention uh, his, his home tabernacle, he, his eyes would light up. He wanted to be there more than anything. Now David didn't just want to be in church because he was going through a difficult time in his life. He always expressed a love for the church. He said, one thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. He also made that statement in the 23rd Psalm too, didn't he? The whole idea from David's experience is that he was a man that loved God's house. And he longed for it when he couldn't be there. Way too many people today look at church as something that they can take or leave. I'll attend when it's convenient. But we all need to understand this morning that the desires of our heart reveal the condition of our soul. What we long for and what we desire in this life reveals what we love and what we love reveals who we are. We all know that the Lord is always with His children and His Holy Spirit lives in each one of us, but He also promised to meet with His people when they come together and worship. Uh, one that we, a verse of Scripture that we refer to quite often is Matthew 18, 20 where two or three are gathered together in His name, I am there in the midst with them. We are gathered this morning in the name of the Lord. And He's with us. He's with us. His presence is here with us this morning. And He's with us every time we gather in His precious name. And we don't want to be like old Thomas, uh, one of Jesus' disciples. Remember, He was absent when, when the Lord showed up and He missed a blessing. I don't want us to miss a thing the Lord has for us. That's why I want us to be in His house as much as possible. Now the Bible points out the fact that, that Thomas was missing. And I believe that the Lord notices us when we're missing as well. David thought about the Lord's house and about how far he was away from it. And he got to thinking uh, about the little birds. He got homesick. That's what he did. 
and he got to thinking about the little birds that made their home in the tabernacle. We've got a few of them outside under the porch there, or had, had some before. And old David was wishing that he could go back to, the, to his tabernacle. And as he thinks about these little, bir these little birds, he mentions two birds in particular, the little sparrow and the little swallow. Now, if these little birds were labeled, you'd probably say the little sparrow's not worth a whole lot, and that the sparrow could be labeled as being a, a little bird that wanders everywhere because they travel to Puerto Rico once a year. But David tells us that both the little sparrow and the wandering little swallow found exactly what they needed in the house of the Lord. And from this we see that the house of the Lord is a place for the unwanted. The little sparrow was unwanted, but they came in droves and in big numbers. They came needy and hungry and looking for shelter, and they found just what they came for. And this illustration that David gives us with the little birds, uh, it uh, is a picture for the sun. The difference in the little birds uh, was that they showed up uninvited. But the sinner is always invited to come to the Lord. The church is a place for the unwanted. I'm reminded of the old song that we sing from time to time, Where Could I Go But To The Lord? Where could I go, or oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. Just needing a friend to help me in the end. Where could I go? but to the Lord. And there in verse 3, it says that the little sparrow found a home. He found a permanent place to live. And I'm so thankful that we can have a church home as well in our lifetime. Now for many of you here this morning, <coughs> Union has been your church home for many years. And for some, <coughs> Union has become your new church home just recently, and I'm so thankful for all of you, and the Lord is too. Now, the little sparrow is like a, a permanent resident. But that little sparrow, that little swallow, rather, he's like a pilgrim. He's wandering. He'll fly away in the fall and he'll come back in the spring. But the little swallow always finds what he needs in the house of the Lord midst of all of his travels. For the pilgrim believers, they found the church to be the same for them. The house of the Lord is a place of safety. It's a place of shelter in this cruel and mean world. It's a place where the cares of life can be laid aside. And again, let's look at verse 3 and the word nest. The word nest there in verse 3. A nest is something that's temporary. A little bird gathers straw and, and string and all other kind of things, put a little, little nest together, but it's only temporary. Well, the church is a marvelous gift that the Lord gave us. But it's just that, like that little nest. We won't need it forever. One of these days, this journey is going to end. And we'll go to live in the house of the Lord up in heaven forever. And we also see there in verse 3 that the <coughs> swallow could raise her young there. <coughs> what a joy it is to see our little ones here on Sunday morning. It blesses my heart and I know it does yours too. They come here to learn about Jesus. And I'm so thankful. That's a good lesson for us. The church is a place to raise our children. It's a place where, where they can hear about Jesus uh, and how to be saved, learn how to worship the Lord, <coughs> sing and enjoy the music. And uh, like never before, as we talked about earlier, our children need to be exposed to the company of believers. In fact, when they're raised in the right atmosphere at church and when they have the right example set for them at home, they'll usually find their way back to the nest. And this ought to cause us to want to have the right kind of church. The house of the Lord is to be a place where God's Word is honored. Where we seek God's will. 
where His name is praised and where prayers are offered up to Him. And I can truthfully say those things happen here at our little church, and I'm so thankful for that. It's a place where no man, no program, and no denomination will ever take the place of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> now for me, I'll be honest with you, uh, first and foremost, I'm called a, I want to be called a Christian. I'm a believer in Christ. I'm a follower of Christ. It don't matter to me what's on the sign outside. It's what lives in your heart that matters. Denominations don't mean a thing to me. It's what's in your heart. And our church is also a place of rest where we can come and lay down our burdens and lay down our cares and find peace being with fellow believers, worshiping the Lord. And, uh, I'm, I'm so thankful that the Lord has provided us this haven of rest uh, in, in the church. Now, not all birds that uh, fly up in the sky could have dwelt there in the tabernacle. Uh, there's birds like the eagle and the buzzard and the hawk and the chicken and the owl and the <coughs> hawking bird. All those birds uh, couldn't occupy the tabernacle uh, because of their mannerisms, but the little sparrow and the swallow is the ones that David thought of because of their lowliness and their humbleness. Uh, they're not full of themselves and they were fully aware of their needs. They just lived on faith that the Lord was going to provide for them at the tabernacle. And it's the same for us as believers. We live by faith that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will provide our needs. And David tells us that he'd rather serve in the tabernacle as the man that opens the door than he had to be the man that serves the world and the devil. You know, the church is a place where everybody can serve. God has given each one of us in this room unique gifts. Not all of our gifts are the same. Uh, many of you possess, possess gifts that I don't have. And we can all come. That's the beauty of church. Is we can come together and use our gifts. Every one of us can use our gifts for the Lord. I encourage you to let your gifts be used here. Uh, in your life uh, here at Union for the glory of the Lord. If the church doesn't hold a high priority in your heart this morning, I encourage you, I encourage you to come to the altar and tell the Lord your heart and let Him change your life and let Him change your relationship to His church this morning. May we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this message that you gave us this morning. We thank you for what we experienced in the message in Sunday school and the music and the fellowship and the prayers, all of these wonderful things. It's the presence of all these little children, the presence of all uh, everyone here today. We're just so grateful and so thankful. We give you all the glory. We dedicate it all to you, Father. Lord, we just ask you now to, during this time of invitation, that if someone has been touched from this message, if they want to be drawn a little closer to you this in this new year, if they need to make a, a decision for you as their personal Savior, now, God, is the time uh, for them to make that decision. We want to thank you, Lord, for our church, what it means to each one of us, the love that we experience here every Sunday. Uh, we give you all the glory for it. It's nothing that we do. It's, it's the spirit that lives in each one of us as believers. Thank you for blessing us. Continue to bless us now and be with us during this time of invitation. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's turn to page 568. As we stand and sing the first and the last verse. 568.
Bobby has a, something she'd like to say to the church. I just want everybody to know I don't know when I've ever been as sick as I have the past several weeks. And I just want everybody to know how much I appreciate the prayers especially, the text, the calls, the visits, and everything. And I know I would not have made it through without my church family. I've always been in church my whole life, but I haven't ever realized how much a church family meant until this time. And it was just, I know that's what got me through. And I just want all of y'all to know what it meant to me and to Devin. And I've always heard there comes a time in your life when your, your children have to take over and do what you did for them. And I really realized this at this time because Nevin was doing things for me that I never thought he'd have to do. And I'm just so thankful that I had him and all of my friends who stood by me the whole time. It's tough when you're alone. And a lot of people know that. But I just wanted all of y'all to know how much I appreciate all of you. And I love every one of you. And thank you so much. Amen. I love you too. share before we have our closing prayer. Okay, if, if not, y'all be safe and uh, take care and have a good week and stay warm or stay dry. We don't ever know about this weather, do we? So, uh, never know. Thank you all for being here and uh, look forward to seeing y'all again next Sunday. And I'm going to ask Brother Earl Granger, if he will, to have our benediction, please. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for allowing us to be here today, for encouraging us to be here today, and for us to encourage others to come and be here to hear the word to learn what your plan is for us. Now we ask that you be with us in the coming days of this week and to keep us and our loved ones so in Christ's name we ask. Amen. Amen. Amen.